Thank you, Mr. Dartmouth. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to make the point, the context of all this is that Bangladesh is not a country that's naturally rich in natural resources, and I think perhaps the Ambassador would agree with me. And in that context, context the Bangladesh textile industry has been rather a success story. And just to pluck out two statistics out of the briefing note, it points out that it uh, directly employs 4 million people, that's 4 million people, of whom 55% are, they use the phrase women, I'm not sure one is allowed to say women anymore, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm quoting from something, I'm not saying it. So it's been a major success story. Now, you have to be, now, uh, we had two representatives of the union speaking who were given a great deal of time to speak. We've had numerous representatives of, uh, of the left of centre parties um, who were the only people who seemed to be, w want to speak. And I would, I would point out that, for instance, in Germany, only 18% of the workforce is actually unionised. Now, the lady from the ILO, I think I detected a North American accent, and in the United States, uh, only about less than 8% of the workforce is unionized in the private sector. And the question, it's not even a question, but the thought I would like to share with colleagues is, look, this country, Bangladesh, has a lot of innate problems, for, not least for climactic reasons, for reasons of climate. It's not, it, is, it, is, it is not an intrinsically wealthy country. This industry has been a great, great success story for the last 25 years. It's empowered numerous people, most of all, uh, and 55% uh, of the direct employees are actually, are actually women. So I would ask colleagues to be very, very careful in seeking to impose the paraphernalia of regulations and so on that might hurt the people working in the industry.